whole country was silent and dark. Light only existed from the flames of our candles and small patches of stars passing through the clouds moving overhead. The power was out, so no one knew how bad it was. The true death toll is still unclear, but at least 10,000 lives were lost. Winds twice the strength of Katrina had pummeled the islands for hours. Water, it offers us life and can take it away. At that time, four years ago, I was living with a family in a rural village of the Visayas, a cluster of islands in the central Philippines. I was in the Peace Corps for over two years there, living in a nipa hut and working as a full-time public high school teacher. I was surrounded by love and sweaty snuggles from my five and seven-year-old host sisters. They became attached to my hip and my most trusted confidants. The sound of roosters performing their daily duty and the smell of burning trash engulfed my senses every morning. On my bright and early walk to school, I'd watch the kids stop by the Sari Sari, where they could buy anything from a plastic bag filled with orange soda to a strip of nine individually wrapped shampoo packets, all for less than a dime. Life there was slow and serene, but the bustling town of Dumaguete was just a hop, skip, and colorful jeepney ride away. There were fun festivals, drinking cobra blood for long life. But then there was the walk to school each morning, alongside starving and decaying dead dogs. There were joyful times of spelunking through burial caves and watching hundreds of prison inmates dance to Thriller. But then there was desperate loneliness. The good memories far outweigh the bad, but the work was definitely discouraging at times. I held camps for gender development, leadership skills, and HIV AIDS awareness to students who go to church every Sunday to hear the priest say, I quote, if you use a condom, you will get cancer. I began to adopt Bahala Na as my personal mantra. Bahala Na is the Tagalog phrase for no worries. Roughly translated, it's up to God. Que sera sera, hakuna matata, inshallah, come what may. All of these words and phrases essentially mean the same thing, no worries. Every culture has their own way of expressing it, but I found Bahalana to be such a huge part of the carefree ethos of the Philippines. At least a few times a week, I would hear this phrase, whether it be a response to a bus breaking down, an excuse why a student didn't show up for class, or a way to justify why a storm just destroyed everything you had. That storm turned out to be the strongest landfalling tropical cyclone ever in history, Super Typhoon Haiyan or Yolanda, as we called it. It tested Filipino resiliency, but their positive spirit still prevailed. The people who were the most affected were in Tacloban City, northeast of my island. At the very least, they lost everything they owned, and at the very most, they lost family members. They were forced to carry the weight of uncertainty on their shoulders, but all their surviving friends and family could see was strength, moving forward with what had to be done. Some chose to flock to the airport, some chose to stay behind and help, and some did not have a choice. Those were the people who I feel depended on Bahalana the most. The mother in mourning who lost her four children still had courage and called herself blessed for being able to recover the bodies and light a candle for them. She focused on being lucky to have that closure. Teenagers built basketball hoops in the rubble and played pickup games while people watched along the sidelines and cheered. Their spirits could not be shattered. There was a march, but it wasn't a protest against the government. It was a march solely to encourage everyone to be brave and to just hang in there. They were wearing colorful wigs and carrying signs that said, we shall overcome. They were staying positive and still goofing around, even though it was pouring down rain and they were walking past blackened and bloated bodies. This blasé reaction to tragedy shook me to the core. After the typhoon, I repeatedly heard the phrase Bahalana, along with, Kamusta ka? How are you doing? Response, Buhi pa, still alive. What shocked me even more than those jokes 
was that throughout the loss and uncertainty, I never heard any resentment. Most people showed no entitlement. They never asked, why us? They had to keep the glass half full. I believe that is just the Filipino disposition, mirrored back even in times of sorrow. They always find a reason to smile. In my experience, the phrase Bahalana embodies that smile and the resiliency of the Filipino spirit. The term signifies an attitude intended to surrender to fate. But is the phrase truly fatalism or maybe just a positive affirmation? Some scholars theorize that saying Bahalana is admitting that people lack an internal locus of control and they don't believe they have the power to affect change in their lives. This may also be a natural result of a country whose citizens are almost 90% Roman Catholic. Other scholars interpret Bahalana in a more positive manner. Instead of seeing it as an act of laziness or a fatalistic approach to problems, they say that it's actually a willingness to take risks. They see it not as a form of passivity, but as a kind of mantra, a demonstration of determination that helps them become stronger. When people say Bahalana, they are encouraging themselves to be ready to deal with the tough situations that will inevitably come into their lives. The Philippines sits on the Pacific Ring of Fire, so its people have seen more than their share of natural disasters. They experience constant earthquakes and more tropical storms per year than any other country after China. Besides that, Mount Mayan is now spewing ash and lava again, erupting for around the 50th time. The government has even raised the possibility of creating a permanent no man's land that would affect over 200,000 people who are living in the fertile farmlands surrounding the volcano. Can the Filipinos ever catch a break? In addition to natural disasters, political challenges abound. Spanish rule, British invasion, revolution, American rule, Japanese occupation. Top all of that with corruption and martial law, and the culture has been shaped and reshaped continuously over the past 500 years. More recently, you may have heard of the current president, Rodrigo Duterte, quite the character. He is now allowing civilians to shoot and kill anyone who they may suspect is a drug dealer or an insurgent. I don't know about you, but living among unmonitored vigilante death squads might make me a fatalist. Cynicism is the enemy of Bahalana. It's a defensive posture we take to protect ourselves, and it can easily take over our lives. Filipinos choose Bahalana over cynicism. I think they can teach everyone a little something about being less entitled, more grateful, and everlastingly resilient. The hero of this story is the resilient Filipino spirit. When tragedy strikes, Filipino optimism overcomes. My hero is the Filipina mother, wife, caretaker, provider, decision maker, and so much more. In the rural villages, she's the backbone of the household, taking care of several children, and often an alcoholic or abusive husband, all while working full time as a nursemaid or teacher. In the capital of Manila, she could be the one on the other line, listening to you complain about your Comcast bill, while she is just trying to put food on the table and support her aging parents. She takes two jeepneys and a motorbike around 4 a.m. to get to her office on time. In this current world filled with angst, where differences are constantly being focused in upon, it's important to hone in on our human similarities across nations and what we, as Americans, can learn from people living all over our world. On a less serious note, sharing this Bahá'u'lláh mindset can lead to more stress-free and happier days. Commuting in rush hour traffic and a jerk cuts you off? Relax, Bahá'u'lláh. You spilled your hot coffee all over yourself and your computer? It happens way too often. Bahá'u'lláh. You're living in a country run by a leader whose decisions make you want to tear all your hair out? It's happening all over the world. Bahalana. It's not about not caring or not having passion. It's about accepting the fact that in some cases, caring won't lead to anything positive or productive. So we should save that energy for something worthy of our time and effort. Easier said than done, though, huh? Believe me, I'm still working on channeling my Bahalana inner peace every day. We can't control life or how much time we have on this earth, 
but we can control our mindset and our reactions. Life is all about your perspective. In the garden of your life, are you tending to the flowers? Or are you wasting too much time picking at the weeds? Are you focusing on the little gleams of magic and wonder in your life? Or are you focusing on the annoyances and what your life lacks? Your mindset determines your outlook. Your outlook determines your experience. And your daily experiences tally up to be your whole magnificent life. You will always find smiles on the faces of those who believe in Bahá'u'lláh.